Let's get right into what we are gonna do here. So first we're gonna set up our oscillators. For oscillator one, we're gonna try this cicada wavetable. And I'm gonna put the wavetable position about right here. Leave the intensity where it is. And we're gonna send it to filter one because we're gonna talk about the filters later. Oscillator two, we're gonna leave as the default and turn the intensity down to about right here. And then in oscillator three, so we can try a number of things. We can try one of these poly saws, which I like a lot, or we can move over to the digital. Why don't we try the formant square? We're gonna leave these knobs where they are. For oscillator one, I'm gonna detune it a whole octave like this. And oscillator two, I'm gonna leave at its current pitch. And then oscillator three, I'm gonna detune seven semitones like that. Make sure that oscillator three's filter spread is set to filter two like this. And okay, it's time to apply a few modulation handles before we get on to some other things. So the first thing that we're gonna do is enter LFO number five, and I'm going to change the crossfade curve to just the sine wave, and I'm gonna throw this internal envelope onto the rate knob, turn this down a little bit, and give myself a range sort of like that, because we're gonna have this sort of sweeping wobble ripple kind of effect but I need to go over to this internal envelope and decrease the decay time so that we just have a nice uniform triangle like that. You can double click these to set them to center. Now I'm gonna take LFO number five and I'm gonna drop it into the wavetable position of this first cicada oscillator. Create a little bit of a range like this. And then I'm also going to bring this into the intensity knob of the second oscillator. Do something similar. And that's it for LFO 5 for right now. So let's see how that sounds. So already we have some kind of interesting spooky movements, but you just wait and it'll get much better. I'm going to choose envelope number 1, and I'm going to assign it to the pitch target in oscillator 2. And now I'm just going to create a very small pitch modulation range, maybe about 60 or 70 cents above the root note, like that. Okay, so let's tweak that envelope now. I'm going to increase the attack time, reduce this the sustain level, and maybe increase the decay time a little bit, and give myself a little bit more release as well. Okay, so I have a little bit of that uh, pitch movement there. That's what we want. That kind of gives us that spooky haunting sound. And I can increase this even more to make it more dramatic. I'm going to drop that same envelope into the pitch slot of oscillator 3. And I'm going to just solo this one. And now I'm going to change the range to to where it's not quite one semitone above that negative seven, but it's maybe a little bit, little bit less, maybe like that. So let's hear that. Oops. So in order to hear this, we need to move over to filter number two and increase the output with this fader. fader. And we also need to change the filter mix. We're gonna modulate this in a second, so don't worry about where this is being set up. But if we bring this down, just so that we can hear this one for right now. A little bit of that drop like that, which is pretty cool. Let's set this filter mix fader all the way back up at the top because we're gonna use another envelope to modulate that one. So I guess now is a good time to set up our filters. Uh, well, really, just one filter. This one we're going to set on the low-pass 4 pole. And the cutoff's good right about there. Um, I like to increase the resonance for this a little bit because it gives us some interesting harmonics. And then filter number two, uh, just keep it on none. Make sure that both of these faders are up at the top. Now let's take our second envelope and drop it into the modulation handle for the filter mix. And we'll put this about... Not not exactly halfway at 50%, but maybe just a little bit above like that. Because we want this filter mix fader to just move like that and then be done. So we're going to go into envelope number two. And we're going to create a sort of similar movement where we have a swell. Maybe a shorter swell, so a little bit shorter of an attack. And a little bit longer of a decay. 
like that. So I need to increase this attack a little bit so that I can actually hear this m the movement of this fader. And maybe even increase this a little bit more. My range. Okay. I'm going to assign the phase modulation oscillator to oscillator number two. And uh, turn this up just a little bit. So I get some of that bite like that. If you really want to create some dissonance, you can increase uh, the pitch here. Okay. Next, I'm going to insert a sample and hold. And in my routing page, I'm going to make sure that this is after the two filters. And uh, I'm going to put insert number two here after filter number one. Insert number two is going to be a uh, sine shaper. You can choose a parabolic shaper, a hard clipper, depending on what how uh, distorted of a tone you're going to want. I'm just going to put a little bit of drive in here like this. Now we move on to the master effects section. And we're just going to create a reverb with full wet signal, full size, and uh, full color. Density, you can, you can sort of adjust this to your own taste. So now we're really hearing to, starting to hear this take effect as a really cool uh, soundscape. It sounds like a movie soundtrack where the bad guy walks in or something like that. And you can add a uh, delay in here as well and turn up the uh, dry wet knob uh, you can increase you can know, you know you can you can also um, adjust this time and then once you try playing with some of these inserts you can try increasing the drive Or you can try um, changing the pitch of the sample and hold insert as well. So there you go. Now we've used uh, just a few simple parameters to create this really huge orchestral sounding spooky pad. You can really design some very interesting sounds um, using Massive. And um, you know, there's much more that you can adjust on this patch to make it your own. So play with it a little bit and see what you can come up with. And we will see you in the next lecture.